welcome Lior and Ben. Today's topic is typologies. And if you haven't heard about it, you will today. And we're going to learn how we can use it to apply to our team dynamics, how we can pick better team members or create the most perfect team possible with the information that we have. So I'm going to toss it over to you two. I am not a typology expert by any means, but we have more info for you. So yeah, what's typologies? What's what is this thing? Well, first, let's talk about what a type is, right? So a typology is just a collection of types. Um, there's dozens of them, maybe more than dozens of them in the world. Um, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram are some of the most famous. So things that everybody knows, like introvert or extrovert, um, or your expression style, right? Is it passive? Is it passive aggressive? Is it aggressive? Um, these are personality traits. So if integral theory says, you know, what what's kind of like the scientific building blocks of who you are as a person from a four quadrant perspective and all your values with regards to levels and lines, the best way I would use to describe your typology is your flavor or your actual personality. So uh, let, let, let me ask a question, Leo, or maybe make a statement and you can correct me if I'm wrong. So I've heard of Myers-Briggs, for example, Myers-Briggs assesses a person on different dimensions. And I think those dimensions are probably what we would call types, right? So I, I'm either an introvert or an extrovert and derivations of those things. Um, or I might be a, a, a creative or a problem solver or whatever whatever the, 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 uh, the way they've described their types. Myers-Briggs is a framework that has chosen a number of types to represent a person, but there are many different Myers-Briggs alternatives and yes. underneath those Myers-Briggs alternatives different people have chosen different dimensions to represent people or like the organizations that come up came up with the framework chose different dimensions to 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 represent people is that fair yeah okay cool good so uh when we're talking about types introvert versus extrovert that might show up in Myers-Briggs it might show up in a second framework or a third framework um so does it matter then uh, if we're saying like there are different types and and some people have made frameworks that are famous, does it matter which framework we pick? Like what? why would I pick Myers-Briggs over an alternative? It doesn't matter as long as you're getting the information you need. Um, personally, I find them to be a little bit obtuse. This is just my opinion. You know, so Myers-Briggs, you're an INFP or you're an Enneagram number nine. And I can never remember what those things mean. So it's too, it's, it's, it's too complex to be useful in a dynamic situation. I don't want to go so far as to say that, but it requires upfront education. You know, so if we're talking about um, like, like the previous video, how do we get a team member in or how do we make sure that the team member is, is going to gel with the group? And we're like, oh, we're looking for um, an ENT something I don't know, man. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing Myers-Briggs at all. I think it's a brilliant framework. I've taken it a bunch of times. I, I think it has a lot to offer. Um, I, I favor more practical things. Like we need, um, we've got a lot of theoretical people on this team. We need to add a few practical people to balance that out. So when you say that, Leo, just to make sure I'm understanding, you've gone the level below Myers-Briggs and you're now talking about individual types. So rather than uh, leaning on on a framework that someone has already put together, you're saying, actually, you're going to pick some dimensions and you're going to say, we need more of this type over this type. Is that fair? Yeah, and I think this is something Alana touched on in the previous episode um, where she said, just from a practical perspective, look at what your team needs, um, look at what you think might not work, and shoot for those things, ask the kinds of, of leading questions that are, you know, if you're interviewing somebody, ask the kinds of leading questions that are, I mean, I don't know why I'm, Alana, why don't you, this is your idea. You well, describe it. I, I, I think that the first step that people often miss when they're thinking about building their team or team dynamics is that they have to know what they want first. And I think that a lot of times people just think, oh, I'm building a dev team and they're going to be front end and some back end. And then they just look for the skills. And it's oftentimes an afterthought about the way that these people might be working together or not be able to work together. And so I think when you, if you're, if you're in a position where you're building your team from, from the ground up, or you're, you're looking to add, I think being really honest about what the, 
limitations are of your existing team. If you are adding one or two people, what, what are the dynamics there and what do you want them to be? Um, and then if you're building a totally new team, what are, how do you want your team to act? Do you want them to be super collaborative? A lot of times, yes. Um, do you expect to have just one subject matter expert on the team or do you want many? And if you do, then you would hope that those people are going to be able to work well with others. And I think having this idea of what you want your team to look like, or at least having the conversation with with the existing team of what they would hope the new team member um, is not just in terms of their skill set, but um, in terms of the way that they might interact is really important. And then once you can define those things and be really clear, okay, we're going for someone who's going to be hyper collaborative. And it's okay that they're not an expert in Java because we want someone also who's willing to learn. So it's okay that if you might hire someone who doesn't have the skill set, but as long as they're showing character traits that they are capable of learning, then that's a great thing to, to keep in mind. So a lot of times it's, I think the hardest part is trying to figure out what do you ask in interviews if you're looking for this very specific thing. And I think if you're, if you're looking for someone say like, who again, doesn't have the skill set per se, but is really collaborative and willing to learn, you might ask like, what are some things that you've taught yourself in the past? Or how, what are some things that like when you started a job were totally new for you? How did you handle that? And it's kind of like thinking of ways to ask um, the questions of, to get to the, are they this person or are they not that person? Um, and I, so I don't necessarily think you need uh, a Myers-Briggs or, you know, it's, it is, it's great information and it's definitely, it's data. So you, it could help with decision-making, but I also think that um, there's nothing that can replace just asking someone in an interview, well, what would you do in this situation? Because then at least you could see their thought process and understand where, where, how they're thinking and how they might handle actual real life situations. So I, I, I think that's great. I think what I am lacking then is, okay, brilliant. We don't need the highest level topology. We're going to look at the dimensions below that. So are you an introvert or an extrovert? For me, that's great. I can, I understand that the dichotomy or the, the, the distance between these two things, one's at one end of the scale another's at the other end of the scale. And I know how to ask questions, which are, which will elicit kind of a response of, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And we've already got loads of extroverts. So if you're an introvert, welcome to the team kind of thing. That's one type introvert or extrovert. How do I know what the polar opposites are for other types like I kind of clumsily said problem solver versus creative and I don't think that's even one so so where do I find a list of types that I might introspect as a team and say oh yes we're lacking that but we have loads of that so we could publish um, a list of some of the types that we recommend um, we'll put a link at the bottom of the video um, I want to make another really important point though um, all typologies exist on a spectrum so nobody is all the way one thing and nobody is all the way the other thing, right? There's no one walking around that's like, I can only think theoretically. I can't, what, what? You want me to do something? I'm I'm completely flummoxed. Like that's not a thing. Um, and the other thing to recognize, and this is where things get tricky, is that people change their types based on where they are. People are different at home than they are at work. They're different alone than they are with other people. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples just to, just to give you, uh, some practical things. Cause I, cause I heard, a um, I heard the two of you come up with some things that I, I think are going to be important to people. Um, so you can have someone who's proactive or reactive, right? So to Alana's point, um, a proactive person who fits in well with others and, you know, is, is a good leader, I would invest in that person to build the skills that it, that's a rare combination of types. And that's the, that's the kind of person that people are looking for. Um, you know, are you a problem solver or are you problem oriented, which means that you spin on the problem. You tend to have a negative bias and you're, you're always dragging things back and, and really being problem focused. Um, and that's not to say that, that folks can't be coached out of these things, you know, and that it's, it's worth checking to see. So let's, let's talk about that growth mindset or fixed mindset. Um, I, we could probably come up with some ideas on how to elicit that one. Um, but you know, the growth mindset people are going to be the ones who you can really invest in and, and get a return on that investment. Just as some examples. I, I tell you, I mean, we, we're going to run out of time here, but, um, I, I struggle because those, all those examples, clearly one is preferential over another. And I don't think that's the point of types. I think there's like in, in men, in some types, I think there's just you are this way or you're this way 
And our team needs more of this and less of this because we're already overweighted this. Whereas the examples we just used are clearly like, oh, okay, well, you, you're, you're proactive rather than reactive or you're problem solver rather than problem spinner. Like, I, I, I would love us in another video to kind of dig more into these dimensions and to kind of think about maybe we should do a video on, on the types and we can describe when a what seems to be negative type might actually be applicable for your team. So stay tuned for that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I, I think it comes down to the art of interviewing. I mean, like, like of course, if you give someone a survey, they're not going to say they're reactive, but you might be able to glean that from an interview question that's like very artfully worded. All right, oh, so I guess yeah, we got more to talk about. <laughs> Sorry, Lear, go for it. No, no, I, I was just going to say there, there are um, typologies where the differences are additive. And there are typologies that are that are, it's just true. One's better than the other, right? Proactive versus reactive, but people can learn. People can learn to move from being reactive to proactive with support. Awesome stuff. Well, we will continue talking about this topic. This has been super interesting, Lior and Ben. Thank you so much. If you have anything that you want to ask us, questions, comments, maybe you want us to help you with your interview questions, reach out in the comments below. We're also going to include some links to, I think uh, we're going to add some typology links so you could check out that information and we will see you next time.